Fine, let me quickly switch gears and tell you uh, the story of how the Mojo's third radio innovation came into being. The way the story actually starts, and as, as you can imagine, uh, while, you know, let me maybe put this into perspective. This is easier said than done, that you are serving so many different markets at the same time. If you go into the support room every day, there is something weird going on. So here are some examples of issues that we face. You know, hey, I installed your APs, all lights are green, but I can't connect. Um, wipe is crappy today. Not getting good throughput today. Yesterday it was great. Um, I'm expecting a big event tomorrow. Is the network going to be fine? Uh, I mean, so our kind of support dashboard is filled with these kind of issues. And I'll just to kind of put the problem statement in context, uh, <clears throat> I will give you two, three quick examples. So here is one day we get a support call. Wi-Fi is not working at a specific site. All other sites are fine. So we ask, you know, is your DSCP up? Yes. Is your DNS up? Yes. Is your radius up? Yes. And the account was becoming hot that we said, hey, ask Bhupinder, our L3 engineer, fly down that site and see what's going on. Bhupinder lands on the site, connects his laptop, can't get onto the network. Within five minutes, he figures out that the layer two switch is not configured. The VLANs are not configured. There's no way data can get into the network. So we would be happy if we could troubleshoot this problem remotely. But you know, at that point in time, we had to ship an L3 engineer on site to get it done. <coughs> now, here's another example. I, I know Drew is, was tweeting some minute ago, so he will kind of uh, relate to this event. Uh, we had a customer, a gaming um, shop, and they complained our card readers can't connect to Wi-Fi. And we said, hey, is your DNS working, DSCP working, radius working? Yes. Uh, this is an emergency. Come over there, do something. So luckily, Drew, our good friend, lives very close by. We called him up. Hey, can you just drive up to this shop and see what's going on? Drew goes over there, connects his laptop. No issues at all. Everything is fine. Then he takes a packet trace over there, packet trace, ships it to us. We look at the trace and figure out, hey, the reason the card readers are not connecting is because they are incapable of processing 11 Mbps data rate packets. They did successfully say that I support 11 Mbps, but when the actual packet arrives, they are not able to process it at all. <coughs> so this was a problem we could not have solved without having a over-the-air packet trace collected from the site. Third example I'll give you, actually a very recent issue. One of our higher ed customer called in and said, hey, I have a big event scheduled this weekend. Can you give me confidence that you know my network is going to scale for the crowd which is coming in? Now we know Robert, he does this test day in, day out. And I wish we could ship Robert overnight to that site and give the confidence to the customer that, hey, no worries, your customer, your network will be fine because we do this testing day in, day out here. But I realized that you know, even if we shipped or asked Robert to go there, how is he going to carry this gear to that site and run that test in front of the customer? and prove that you know, your network is going to be fine. So this is one problem we could not solve. And that's kind of prompted us thinking, you know, what is it that we need to do more in our solution to solve these kind of problems? So we started thinking, that, you know, what do our engineers do when they go on site? Well, we realized that engineers actually do not look at console. They do not look at logs. Because you've already done that before going to the site. They run completely independent set of tests when they go on site. Take their laptop, their tools to you know, connect, check, signal strength, do DSCP check, do DNS check, and a whole bunch of tests. And finally, they apply their own knowledge and expertise to figure out what's going on. So we said, well, we can't really replicate the last bullet, but at least the previous few steps are something which we can easily package into an access point very, very easily. So that's where the thought came in that, you know, why don't we take Boop, our L3 engineer, and just bundle that person inside an access point in the third radio. Won't it be cool? Because without having to fly him around, we could just instruct the third radio, hey, do this test for me, and instantly you have the result. So we said, hey, let's do it. Why not? And that's exactly the feature we have recently launched. You select an AP. You select which AP you want to simulate as a client. Uh, you select the templates, what kind of tests you want to run, and boom, that comes the report. 
your association is fine, authentication is fine, DS. So very similar flow that Kaustub showed in his presentation, except this test is a simulated client test. You are simulating a client in the network on demand and seeing whether that client can go through the network very well. Now, in terms of capability, I, when people will say this is nothing new, this has been done before, and I'll agree it has been done before. You will agree that such kind of tests you cannot do using a pure dual, dual radio AP because you don't have a spare radio to do that test. There are, however, APs available in the market where you can switch their mode into a monitor mode and have them launch these tests. But I'll argue that if you do it through a three radio AP, it is so much better. And the reason is you can do that test on a live network without causing any service disruption at all. You can troubleshoot the problem exactly when it is happening rather than having to convert or timeshare some of your assets into a troubleshooting mode. So the level of you know, flexibility and the power you get with the third radio always available to you, I actually visualize them as a boop available to me to help me out whenever there's a problem. I tell him to do something and it does it for me and instantly I have the answers. Now, Quick, quick question yes. on that. So, so we've all seen the graph that, that, or, or some, some documentation on why you should never have two APs too, too close to each other because as soon as you do, you know, your, your, your channel, the, the fall off, you know, past your 20 megahertz channel or whatever, right, gets really wide once you get real close, right? Yes. How do you deal with that uh, in software or hardware so that if you're troubleshooting something on an adja yeah. adjacent channel? That very, 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 very good question. So first of all, this radio does not continuously transmit. It only transmits when you want it to do. So it's not like, it's not like a dual five gig type of a radio where it's continuously operating, right? We have built filters so that there is some RF isolation. So there's some effort has been put into the RF design to keep these two radios a little bit apart. Okay. So yes, I will agree there will be some degree of uh, sensitivity effect when the secondary is operating, but the value that you get is so phenomenally great that it is worth having that radio. Okay, okay, but even listening, so if it's <coughs> listening on channel six, but the 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 uh, 2.4 radio that is in that AP is on channel one, it's not gonna hear very much on channel six just simply because every time the the its own and its own the only the the other uh, radio in that AP transmits, it's gonna be completely blown out, right? Yeah, so that problem is no different for this radio than anybody who's trying to do like a VIPS function through the third radio. Because that's also radio trying to listen. So maybe I'll take this question offline. Okay. But yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, whatever are the physics limitations, you cannot beat that. But within that space, whatever best you can do, certainly you do. Okay. It. All right. Thank you. So since actually I am uh, almost coming to an end uh, end of time slot, I want to make sure that I don't lose time on the punchline of what I wanted to say. So I'm going to run through very quickly. So once we were able to figure out how to embed an L3 engineer in the AP, we figured, hey, why stop? Why not? embed Dr. RF, who is a RF expert, into the AP, in the third radio, who knows exactly how to do RRM. So I'm going to skip all of this stuff. The point is that radio is continuously listening. And because you have a dedicated radio, that radio is 100 times faster than doing background scanning. And the reason is background scanning radio is only spending 1% of time going off channel. This guy is continuously scanning. So it's 100 times faster. And a uh, lot of good things can happen. And then we said, why stop at Dr. RF, embed Dr. Chaskar, who is our WIPS expert, also into the third radio. So now we've got three experts sitting in the third radio available to you to do amazing things on demand. And the power is actually not only these three guys, but the API framework, the software around them, so that you can invoke them on demand to do things for you. And rather than going in elaborate charts and graphs to explain what that power is, I will invite Murthy to show you one demonstration of what that power can do for you. Uh, so this is a short demo to demonstrate the power of the APIs that uh, Praveen mentioned. So as all of you can recognize this device, this is an Amazon Echo Dot. So let's see if Alexa can tell us the network status or other things going on at this site. Launch Mojo Aware. Launch Mojo Aware. Hello, welcome to Mojo Aware. What can I do? Give me the network status at Mountain View location. Network status for location Mountain View as follows. 
There are seven active access points and one inactive access point. Six clients have successfully connected to the network and four clients have failed to connect to the network. Start a network test at Mountain View location. So I think this test takes some time. So meanwhile, I'll just uh, quickly go through how this was possible, right? So the Mojo API architecture and the framework we have in the cloud, that is the key component behind this app. So there is an Alexa app that we built hosted in the cloud that integrates with the Mojo API. So it sends a command to the Mojo, Mojo cloud, which in turn instructs the APIs which are live here in this facility to conduct this test. In fact, the test is going on as we test complete. Here are the results. Association successful. DHCP successful. Obtained IP address 192.168.201.144. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Default gateway IP 192.168.201.3. DHCP latency is 461 milliseconds. Default gateway is reachable. Latency to default gateway is 2 milliseconds. Latency to DNS server 192.168.201.3 is 5 milliseconds. Latency to WAN host www.google.com is 5 milliseconds. Ping test to host www.google.com is successful with a latency of 61 milliseconds. Ping test to host www.cnn.com is successful with a latency of 94 milliseconds. End of test result. Thank you, Alexa. You are welcome. I love Mojo Cognitive Cloud Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Did you have any control over which AP was actually running the test and where it was? I mean, you just ask Alexa. We, you could come here and ask, but can you say, I want that third radio to do it? So we got this idea two days ago that how do we show the power of the So Murthy hacked this demo up. In two days. So in two days. Well done. <laughs> nice. So to ask a question, all you need to do is write a few more lines of code to give you the option which API you want to run the test on, which site you want to work on. It's, it's, I think we want this app to be developed by the developer community rather than by us. Because it's so simple. We will make our APIs available. And there's amazing things you can do with them. This I guess, is just I guess my question was, do you have uh, the chipset that's in there, a lot of drivers you say, I want to join this SSID, and you can't choose BSSID. Does your third radio have the ability to, to, to associate to a specific BSSID? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So you want to answer that, yeah. Yeah, it can. So the way it works is you have a test profile which specifies the SSID, and the BSSID is chosen based on the SSID on which you want to do the test. Mm 